On today's episode of Locked On Avalanche, there is a clause in Josh Manson's contract that is no longer there. So if the Avalanche wanted to move him for some cap relief, they could. But will they? Let's talk about it. New episode of Locked On Avalanche coming at you. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche Podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. I am your host, Chris Maselli. With me as always, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Thank you for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. Make sure you follow us on our social media outlets, LOPN underscore Avalanche on Twitter X, Locked On Avalanche on Instagram and Threads. Questions, comments, concerns, opinions, locked on avalanche at gmail.com and follow us on our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live and make sure you subscribe to our subtext as well. Link to that's in the show notes below. And when you do, you chat with Kyle and I one on one. We get your opinion, everything avalanche related, which we share on this very podcast. If you're watching over on YouTube, you'll see our rundown over that way. Um, we're going to get to the number 24 pick, which the avalanche have in this year's draft. What is the history of that? Going back, we're going to go back about 15 years. So we'll go to 2010 and kind of take a look at who's been at 24 and what does that say, if anything, for the Avalanche? What, what, what talent is around based on the past 15 years? And Barclay Goodrow from the New York Rangers is on waivers as we speak. Well, as yeah, as we speak and we're recording this, <laughs> when you listen to it on uh, Wednesday, uh, the, the time could have passed. I think he'll clear, but there's more to it than that. So we'll discuss, could be coming to the Avalanche. Would that be a good addition? So we'll talk about that. But where we're going to start, sir, is uh, with Josh Manson and in a, in a roundabout way, Sam Girard as well. <clears throat> and basically, uh, Josh Manson, his current contract, his first two years, he had a full no trade, no movement clause. He wasn't going anywhere for two years. Now that two years is up, he has a modified <clears throat> no move clause. I think it's 15 teams he can write down to say, like, I will not be traded here. He could still be traded to those not 15 teams if the Avs go to him and say, like, we have a deal with them. Would you accept it? That's the only way that it, that could happen was he'd have to sign off on it. The teams that he doesn't write down, fair game. Um, and we only bring that up because we know the Avalanche are in a, a cap crunch here, like other teams. And is it out of the realm of possibility that they could move guys they don't necessarily want to move? We're going to talk about Barclay Goodrow, like we just talked about. The Rangers didn't want to have to waive him, uh, but but that's what teams are up against. You you need to free up some money somehow, some way, and sometimes that's including getting rid of guys that you don't necessarily want to. And I can guarantee you the Avalanche don't want to get rid of Manson, and they might not. This is just for a topic of conversation here. Uh, but it is, I'm sure, something that they have maybe explored to free up some monies at four and a half million uh, against the cap every year. Um, do you think it, it's feasible? We'll start there, and then there's other there's other avenues to this. Well, then you you run into the question: Does Josh Manson provide you something at four and a half million that you can't get by calling up somebody on the Eagles? Or signing a free agent. For, well, that's for, for this life. is this is your baseline because if we're going to be talking about Barkley Goodrow in a minute, but when opportunities like this arise for the Colorado Avalanche, you look at your roster and you have to make that quick decision. Can I? Because well, it doesn't you, have to be quick. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> you 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 make sure that you you have your uh, eyes dotted and t's crossed. Well, but I that's, know you're... that's true, but. <laughs> you don't want to be there are teams that have plenty of cap there are teams that are positioned to make these moves and you don't want to be behind every move that is made all year long and you're you're picking up the scraps at the end of the year Goodrow might be a, a potential addition what do the ads do you look at the production of josh manson is this a make or break player for the abs right now and honestly I don't think so for four it's, and a half million. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a good conversation to have. I think the Avs like him. I think he likes obviously playing with the Avs. He brings something to your team. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't think you can deny that. But I think it's it's a good question. Is like is it so rare what he brings you 
that you couldn't go find that somewhere else for a little bit less. And then you run into the whole thing of like, well, that's a brand new player. He hasn't been with the team. And what, you know, there's value to being with the same team for now. This would be his third year with them. And uh, just, just the comfortability like that comes into play. Uh, but that's early on. I, I think that gets ironed out as the season goes along. And and I'm not trying to trade Josh Manson here, but if you need s- some money to to do other things with that are well documented, like we've we've talked about, obviously you have Middlestat, you have Drew N. Uh, there's other needs here and there that you need, um, and and you don't have a lot of money to do it. Would saving a million dollars, you go find someone that's a three and a half, that can go a long way. And if it can bring someone that does something similar in the realm of what Josh Manson can do, do you entertain that? I think you have to. And and to your point about the bringing in the new player and not being acclimated to the Avalanche system, Josh Manson, like you said, he's about to go into his third year. It's And what he's providing is about the same level. And it's almost like he's been in the league for a little bit. Is this the old dog, new tricks <laughs> kind of theory? Would you have an easier opportunity with somebody in a farm system or – a i hate to use the term now because it, it kind of means something different but the nachushkin like somebody giving up on a player and they're kind of cheap and maybe we could give them a second chance here you could go a cheaper option and teach them the avalanche way i mean we were just talking about kale mccarr's grade yesterday i mean mm-hmm. you get to have kale mccarr and taser teach you how the avalanche defense is run that can't be that bad no, it's not. <laughs> no, it can't be that bad. Um, and and the other reason we're bringing this up is because you know we we had talked about <clears throat> um, the other day trading with uh, Columbus for um, Patrick Line for, for Line. Sorry, I'm doing ten things at once here. And and you know I'm not saying it uh, uh, it would be a Line for uh, uh, Manson. You know th- there'd be a package involved there. Um, but we got a, a Koi, who's part of our subtext, um, sent me a, a kind of like a, a, a mock trade proposal. And he, because he was listening to that episode, and he said, you know, what if it was something like this? Line A to Colorado and back to Columbus would be this year's first rounder, uh, Val Nachuskin, who that, that was the whole conversation, was, was Nachuskin, and Sam Gerard. And Sam Gerard's always been in trade conversation, I think more in the fan realm than really uh, the Avalanche front office realm. But again, if we're talking about Josh Manson, who is making four and a half million and you're considering trading him to free up a little bit of money, um, would you not do the same for Sam Gerard? And Sammy now like he he has a modified no trade clause as well. Um, and I don't know how many teams are on that. I'm trying to find it as we're talking, but it, it, it's it's not a full that I can see. So his is probably uh, I'm trying to see. Uh, no, it doesn't doesn't say. But um, no, I can't find it anyway. But it, it, it just the the icon tells me it's it's modified. So it, it usually it modifies in like the ten to twelve to fifteen range. So it's probably in that realm for for Sam Gerard. So both guys would have a modified trade clause, but Sam George in that in the same conversation, they offer different things to your team. So that trade right there, it made me think because we were saying like I don't, you're not doing, I don't think you're doing Valnichuskin for uh, Patrick Line one for one. I don't see that happening with just the baggage that's coming with Valnichuskin going back to to Columbus, although. If it works out, if they Columbus would do that and it worked out, uh, they got a guy for multiple years that they're going to benefit from. But I just don't see there's just way too much there in a short period of time for them to pull the trigger on just that. Something like this, um, I think that's a, it's a little bit me, 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 now because I just hate throwing first round picks in. That, I, that's that's just my my hang up, and I know it shouldn't be, but um, because if you give up a first round pick this year, you don't have a first, second, third this year. You also don't have a first, second, third round next year. And I don't think the guys want to go two years in a row without a first round pick. But it's a, it's an interesting trade proposal that he brings up and one that if, you know, the money would would honestly benefit the Avs 
because uh, what Nichushkin and Sammy make is more than uh, what Line A makes. So it's not the worst trade proposal I've ever seen. It's not. Uh, but see, the thing is now, looking at it, Sam Gerard holds a little bit more value because Sam Gerard gives you more. He's like, let's look at the last three years. Last year, Sam Gerard gave you 59 games. And of course, that's amended. 76 the year before, 67. You go look at Josh Manson the last three years, 76, Rough. 27, and 22. Yeah, yeah he's gotten hurt. You could you could yeah. get rid of that four and a half million, and that's not gonna hurt as much as what Sam Gerard could give you. And he's getting better, but he's it's a man on the ice that knows the avalanche system, and he's been there longer. So that money doesn't hurt me as much because you're getting a little bit more value than you would with Josh Manson at the four and a half. You can offload that because it's still a gamble if you're even going to get over 40 games out of Josh Manson. So I threw that question out to our subtexters of if you had to uh, between Josh Manson and Sam Gerrard, if you were forced to move one of these guys, which one would it be? And it was a pretty interesting return on what they had to say. So let's get our first break in. When we come back, we'll talk about that. And of course, Barclay Goodrow on waivers, something the Avalanche entertain. We'll talk about that coming up next. All right, let's hear from Game Time as an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. And with killer last minute deals, all in pricing, views from your seat. The lowest price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. What do we love about the game time app? Well, you can save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for sporting events, concerts, comedy, and theater. The flash deals. You can save even more with exclusive in app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. The zone deals all in pricing. The price you see up front is the price you pay. No surprise fees at checkout and the lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So download the game time app, create an account, use the promo code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase terms apply. So once again, create the account and redeem the code locked on NHL L O C K E D O N NHL for $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, so let's get into uh, the subtext question that I threw out uh, to our people who follow us on subtext. Um, and the question was, if you had to, if you had to move either Josh Manson or Sam Gerard, who would it be? It's kind of split here, man, uh, because they they offer different roles. Um, Sam is that puck moving defenseman, not the scoring touch you'd like to see. Neither is Josh Manson, but he put up career high in goals this year. So, hey, maybe that can continue. Um, and, and Manson just brings, he, he's your muscle. He really is on, on the defensive end. Um, Katie said, I think possibly Sammy G just because Manson is one of the only, uh, guys willing to drop the gloves. There you go. And I don't want the team to not have that role filled. <clears throat> she's, she's right there in that he really is the only guy that is, I don't say, I don't want to say the only guy that's up to fight, but if there's a fight that should happen. Or someone that you need to back up a guy. Everyone's looking to Josh Manson, right? But here's the problem, Kyle. The abs don't do that. They don't retaliate. We saw it multiple times. And we're waiting for it to happen. And the hit on Devon Taves with Jamie Ben, they just let him go. So it's not in their, their makeup to do this and to retaliate. And to have a guy that drops the gloves when you think he would be. So is he beneficial in that aspect? No, he's not. It, 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 that's something you got to look at. Like that was one of Jared Bednar's first moves was getting rid of Cody McLeod because that's just not the avalanche <laughs> style that he wanted to have. There hasn't been a fighter since. And no. you don't have that enforcer. We just kind of paint the picture like Zadorov. We used to say he was, but then he turned into a pylon. <laughs> we used to say Kadri was, but then when the moments you thought he was going to fight, he wouldn't. And without Landis Gog, there isn't really a fighter. And Manson, we just kind of put that on him, but he's really not that guy. He's not. He's really not. Like you know, he can play that role if if needed. But again, we don't. We don't. That's not what we look to him for. Like you look to him if if, if it 
something was going to happen like immediate, um, but it never happens that way. The Avs just go back to playing their game, focused on the game. In some aspects, I like that. In some aspects, I hate that. So uh, it, 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 I understand what she's saying, and she's right, but they don't utilize him that way. Um, go ahead, sir. No, I think that's that's part of a Bednar philosophy. I think they I think have so, players, yeah. and I think he tells them, do not do this. Don't do it. I totally agree. Uh, Mark says, this is so unfair. Uh, he goes, Sammy, ugh, this is tough. I'd keep Sammy to keep the left-right balance. Manson would be only half a million dollars in savings, um, but I'd still keep him in this draconian set of circumstances that we have laid out for him. So um, I, in, in some aspects, it's just who do you like more? <laughs> who do you like what they can give you more? And, and what, what is more valued on the team? I think what Sam Girard gives the avalanche is more valued than what Josh Manson gives you. And not to say that what Josh Manson gives you is not. It's just I think they look to the Sam Gerrard style of defenseman a little bit more. Yeah. It's just how and they play. He complements the speed style that the Avalanche forwards use, and he plays really well with creating a rush. Josh mm -hmm. Manson, it's, sometimes it's a struggle <laughs> to get it out of the zone with him. Uh, Zach says uh, Josh Manson in terms of who he would trade. I think Sammy has a higher hockey IQ. Sammy could play on a top line or power play if needed. Very true, and he, that you know that's where Sam um, he 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 can. You can move him around a little bit when uh, Taves is was out or even Kale McCarr was out. He can prop up to that top pairing, um, and the same goes if you know if they're both out. He can play on the power play one if he wants to. If he's not on power play one, he's been on power play two most of the season. So he gives you that kind of uh, free reign to really move him around and use him where he's needed. That's a good point. And see, that's a great point right there. What makes you feel better, 25 minutes of Manson or 25 minutes of Gerard? Yeah. I'd probably go 25 minutes of Gerard. Yep. I probably would. Madam Battleaxe, uh, I would trade Manson, and she puts in capital letters, not because I want to. But he tends to play too emotional and end up in the box sometimes, causing us to lose an advantage, which can be a liability. But I love Manson, and I really hope this is purely a hypothetical question. Uh, and she also said she's not a Bronco fan, or not a Bronco fan, but she loved the blue. And I think, yeah, that well, I, I still don't. But thank you, Madam <laughs> Um, You know, that that's a good point. I mean, Manson does play a little bit aggressive. That's his style. And how we're talking is you can bring in someone that's a little bit cheaper uh but they would put still play that way so you're probably going to replace him with a guy who still has penalty issues i would assume yeah it's hard to have this question off the season that manson had where there were multiple games where multiple penalties from manson were occurred in that game so yeah you kind of look at that kind of you know and uh vargar says that that's a tough decision i thought manson put the final touches on the defense in 2022 he was amazing in that run but has fallen off since i love sammy g as a person and in the locker room he's a good puck mover but he does get exposed in the playoffs because of lack of size answer i trade both of them i don't love either <laughs> so, so uh you're saying really nine million dollars <laughs> yeah right so it's interesting. And and could the Avs go this route? Uh, you don't see the Avalanche really put in this situation a lot where they need to move guys they don't really want to um, because they got to free up some some money. But their hand might be forced here. And and I really wonder how much of it comes into play with, with Donna Chuskin and, and any move that they make. Would a team be willing to take him on? It only takes one, Kyle. Only takes one team. And maybe that team is out there and if they can just do a, a one for one i wonder if the abs will just do it for something cheap because they mm -hmm. genuinely just want to get out from under it they don't want him part of their future uh and it would be just for a late round draft pick or something that would be just unthinkable um a year ago but if, if that's where they're at and they really want to get out from under it they could be given another team a, a, a trade of a lifetime but I don't think the Avalanche will go that route. I, I think they will see this through with him, at least to start the season. Um, and then, again, like we said before, come trade deadline, who knows? Yeah, you put either one of those names on the draft on your trade board and say they are available, you're getting more calls on Gerard than Manson because what they can bring 
and that should tell you the value. And this is five hundred thousand dollars of difference. Yeah. And then, like we said earlier, but Barclay Goodrow from the New York Rangers was waived. Um, you would expect he would clear, and if he does, then the Av or excuse me, the Rangers have some options on what to do with him. One way or another, they're they're going to get rid of him. They're either going to buy him out um, or trade him. Uh, there, I don't think this this was not a move to, you know, you don't put a guy in waivers now just to clear and then say, yeah, well, we tried, not yeah. right now. Um, and and it's clear the Rangers need some cap space. So I, I believe he's going to clear just because his cap number just doesn't make sense for his production right now, which was over three, was 3.1, I believe it was, right? I think yeah. so. Um, so if that's not the number, uh, you're looking, you know, you can cut that down a little bit and get a really good, solid depth guy who's got a veteran presence, especially in the playoffs. He's been there, played in Stanley Cups, won Stanley Cups. Um, could this be a little enticing for the Av This is the type of guy I feel like they want to go after. If the number is right, you always got to preface any signing the avalanche or, or a guy that they're interested in with that. And, and it, where's Goodrow's head? Does he want to play for, you know, I'm sure he wants to play for a contender. Everybody's saying, oh, and whenever a guy like this is waived or is available, he's like, uh, oh, there's going to go back to the lightning, which always could happen. But maybe he just wants to move on from everything. I I would like this if if the the numbers can line up for both parties. I would like this a lot. I would have liked this if last year didn't happen. Um, you can't play eighty games and just tally twelve points and say three point one is not a good his game. Point. It's not his game. Like well, he can it, he can put up points. He can. He's shown that that he can. But for for depth, he puts up exactly what I I want him to put up for for uh, total points and stuff like that he is it, like in my mind, like the prototypical depth guy for what he can do offensively. Cause it's all just bonus. Everything else. He like, he he's, you know, uh penalty kill on it. Um, defensively. He's great. He like, could he be the Cogliano replacement if Cogliano doesn't come back? Uh, yeah. That's my guy for, for doing stuff like that. Well, it, it's just alarming to have 33 the year before and then drop down to 12. It and is. Yep. And you wonder, and then for you to be put on waivers after this performance, it, you, you kind of want to look deeper into what's going on here. It, it, is this more than just cap? Are they giving up? Because mm -hmm. you're not getting more, like, unless this number comes down to, like, two something, then we can entertain. But if it's if it's an, another, like, they whittle it down to three, two and a half, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. You could do, you could do better somewhere else. And again, the Avs don't have a lot of money that they could do this. And this honestly seems perfect for a Chicago rebuild. If he knows his role, mm -hmm. right? He's not trying to be something that he, that he, he more than what he needs to be. So um, I, I don't think it's anything deeper than that. I don't like, don't read into it. Any, the Rangers did not want to do this. Um, and it, it was, and this was a contract that they gave him that he's pl currently playing on. It wasn't like they inherited this contract when they, they traded for him or something like that. No, like this, they, they signed him and this is the deal that they gave him. And now they have to go back on it because it's a little bit too rich for what he gives you. So 3.1 is not it. You could be in that. Uh, he's a fourth liner. You're not giving a fourth liner 3.1. You're giving a fourth liner one, 1.5, 1. 1. 1.75. I think that the avalanche could find a way to make that work. I think, I think, and I would be there. You're not getting them off waivers because then you inherit that contract and you have to pay that. So he's going to clear and now it's going to become a, a he, and I think he is going to get moved uh, to a contender and, We'll see what you know if, if it's through trade or, or how, how it goes about, or if, if he gets bought out, then he's free reign. Uh, I'd be surprised if the Avalanche aren't in this personally. I think they should be. I'll say that I really think they should be because I think he he could it, it, it's what they like for their depth guys. I'm there, I'm yeah, with he, it. he's a prototypical Avs guy. It's just the money, the money, the money, the money. Of course, it is. Yep, absolutely. If they can make it work, if uh, McFarland can, can work his magic and say, like, Hey, you know, we. We have to take a little bit less, one of those things, but we can guarantee we'll be right there. 
uh, and competing for it, that sells. We'll see. This one's got me a little bit excited, so we'll see. All right, let's get into a little bit of draft stuff. Uh, history at the number 24 draft pick. Is it okay? Or we should we get excited? Maybe not. We'll see what's uh, been in that area in the past, and we'll do that next. Okay, so the draft is uh, not that far away, right around the corner, sir. And uh, Avs have the number 24 draft pick. And uh, after that, they don't pick to the fourth round. And tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's episode, I do a crossover with Hattie Kalakesh of Locked On NHL Prospects. We go over a lot of these guys, a lot of them um, that are available. We don't do the top guys because I don't care about the top guys because we're not picking there. So we do guys are just in the area for the Avs. He actually also gives uh, throws out some guys that could be in that fourth round pick because I don't go that far. I do first, second round talent, and uh, that's all the time I have. Uh, he's a freak with this stuff. Um, so he throws out some guys that are could be available in the fourth round. Um, but for the first round, the abs do have the number 24 pick. And then, like I said, don't pick for the second and third round. They don't have a first round pick for uh, next year or a second or a third next year as well. So it's, they got to get this right. Um, could they trade it and inherit, uh, you know, maybe put some more uh, picks, the ones that they've lost? Could they do that? Sure. Uh, who knows? But if they keep it at 24, uh, I figured to go back to the year 2010 and see who uh, kind of go through these and uh, anybody that really kind of jumps out at the number 24 pick. So back in 2010, not a bad one. Chicago Blackhawks, Kevin Hayes at 24. Worked out okay. Oh, if the Avs could get a <laughs> Kevin Hayes type player at 24, we'll yeah. be all right. It was all right. Uh, in 2011, uh, the Ottawa Senators selected Matt Pumple. Don't know much about Matt Pumple. If I'm spelling that right, he only played 87 games, uh, so did not have much of a career. Um, in 2012, the Boston Bruins selected Malcolm Subban, PK's brother, goalie. I forgot that that's where he was drafted, was, and, and, was Boston. Because he's been kind of in a number of places. Uh, hasn't really panned out, obviously. But, yeah, 24th overall. You don't see goalies going in the first round much anymore. No, and he, was, he, wasn't, t he wasn't terrible. He's a journeyman, but he is. Um, He's got good games. Career backup. Um, that year, I should be doing this too. Who did the Avalanche take in, in these years? <clears throat> did they not have one in 2012? Uh, does not look like it. No, they did not. Nope, no draft pick. First round draft pick. 2013, um, that was when Nathan McKinnon went number one overall. 24th was Hunter Shincrook for uh, Vancouver. 15 games played total uh, did not work out. Oddly enough, who got picked right before him? Andre Burkowski at 23. Never heard of him. <laughs> uh, in 2014, um, 24 Vancouver again, Jared McCann. That, that's a nice pickup. That's a, that's a, not a bad one right there. So I, I think uh, they'd be happy with that. But this one, this one also hurts because the Avalanche picked right before that, at twenty three, and that was the Connor Bleckley oh. draft, who maybe is their worst draft pick ever. And it's just it, you look at this guy if you're looking at it like a broad view, like I am. Everybody that was picked in the first round that year has stats of some sort. Connor Bleckley's is just blank. Never played it. Uh, <laughs> let's say never played it down. He, he <laughs> never, never played it down. Never he played did. a shift. No. And the pick after Jared McCann. So it went Connor Bleckley, Jared McCann at 25 for the Boston Bruins. David Pasternak. Never heard of him. Man, if that one, he, I like him. I, I'm not yeah. a big Bruins fan, but he is just so good. <laughs> He's awesome to watch. In 2015, this is when uh, Miko Rantanen went number 10. The Philadelphia Flyers at 24, Travis Konechny. Oh, great pick there. Great Very pick. good. Um, you have some pretty, pretty good picks overall here. You have uh, Brock Besser went right before at 23. 
Um, you have Anthony. No, yeah, you do. You have Anthony Beauvillier at twenty-eight to the Islanders. Um, Eric Sinek was in there at twenty. Kyle Connor at seventeen. Oh. I know we're going way back now, but um, I mean, you ended up with Nico Ranton and everything was fine, but not a bad pickup at twenty-four for the Flyers with Travis Konecki. Yeah, and, and don't get any ideas. The draft is not going to be that deep going this year. This one isn't, and I get into that a little bit with Hattie. Um, it's a good draft, but these middle round guys could be middle round for the first round all the way to the middle round in the second round. So yeah. you don't really know. 2016, uh, this is when Tyson Jost went number 10 to the Avs. 24 to Anaheim, the Anaheim Ducks, Max Jones. Uh, of the OHL, London Knights of the OHL, 258 games played, 31 goals, 31 assists. So he's he's Thanos. Everything is in balance. <laughs> um, <laughs> but doesn't really jump off the page at you. In 2017, um, 24, you have the Winnipeg Jets, Christian. I cannot pronounce that. Veselainen. Veselainen. Yeah, maybe Veselainen. 70 games played, so it hasn't really done a ton. Um, that was a Nico Heischer. That was a Kel McCarr draft, actually, in 2017. So we did just fine there. 2018. Um, <clears throat> this was the Martin Kaut draft. Where oh. The Avalanche picked 16. Um, the Minnesota Wild. Picked Philip Johansson, who has not played a down. Nope. Uh, so not much there. I'm trying to think who's around there. Let's see. That's Keandre Miller Ooh. went 22 to the Rangers. Um, Rasmus Sandin to the Maple Leafs at 29. Um, that's really it. So talent stopped at 24 is what you're saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, that's a rough draft right there. Wow. Uh, 2019. This is the Bowen Byram draft where they went number four? Nashville Predators select Philip Tomasino, who um, not bad. Where is he right now? Yeah, yeah. Is he still with them or no? I don't. I don't think so. I think. Yeah, why do I feel like he got traded recently? Maybe just look that up really quick. Why do, 140... why do I feel like he's in Ottawa? No, I don't know why that's not jumping out at me, but who knows. Uh, 2020. What do we got here? Avalanche actually picked 25 in this draft where they took uh Justin Barron, who they have actually actually since traded. 24 was Connor Zari, who I really liked in that draft. That's kind of who I was hoping the Avalanche would uh grab, and he went the pick before, um, at 24. So that one Tom that one hurt a little bit. Yeah, Tomasino is still in Nashville. Is he still in Nashville? Okay, why do I feel like I could get traded for some reason? But, okay. Uh, 2021, we have 24. The Florida Panthers took Mackie Samosh. Samo. Man, I don't know. Samo Kivich? Samos Kivich. Uh, he's played seven games so far from the USHL. Not a ton there. The pick before that? Dallas Stars took Wyatt Johnston. Mm. Mm. Talent not a bad one. 23. This was the one where the Avs took uh, Oscar Olauson at 28. So still waiting for him to kind of make it. And that's another thing Hattie and I get into. Yeah. Uh, in 2022 is Oscar Olauson. We do talk about Oscar Olauson. 2022, uh, 24, Minnesota Wild took Danili Yurov, who has not played. And a lot of these guys in this draft right here has, have not played yet. So they're still waiting for guys in this draft to kind of make their mark. Um, did the Avs have one this year? And, and if you haven't played for the Wild yet, that's that's interesting. Yeah. They'll yeah. take anybody on the team. There's a couple guys in here in the Wild at 24 who have not played or have played very minimal. So if the Wild are playing, picking at 24, uh, it might not go well for them <laughs> for future years. Um, and then. Let's see. Last year, we know last year uh, for the Nashville Predators was Tanner Molendyke, who has not played yet. But um, I remember 
doing kind of some research on him. Um, and I think a lot's expected of him. I don't know where he's at right now in his. <clears throat> he's probably he's in Milwaukee. WHL right now. Oh. What's that? I said it, yeah. it'd be nice if he was in Milwaukee right now. Yeah. Uh, but obviously last year the abs went Callum Ritchie and Mikhail Guliaev. So, um, it's tough. It's, it's like hit or miss at 24. And that's really the history of that pick is you, do you have the list up of guys before that? Cause I know oh. Daniel Briere was 24, yeah, um, you had, but go ahead. It, TJ Oshi in 05, yeah. Alexander Steen in 02. Mm-hmm. Like you got, you got names, but then it's, it's feast or famine at the 24 it spot. Is. It and is, then, so. like you're covering with the the recent ones, you're not going to see these this pay off for another right couple of years. So, right. this is possibly going to pay off in the future. But then, of course, we could be doing this episode in five more years and saying, "Boy, what were we doing with the 24th pick?" There's yeah. not a didn't play it down. You just don't know. You're it, it's it's. I don't say it's boom or bust, but um, they're definitely not. It's not a definite home run at no. 24. So we'll see where they go. But tune in for tomorrow's episode because uh, Hattie and I get into uh, a number of prospects. Uh, our pick, we, we made our pick. Um, we talk about that, if he's in agreement with it, um, and a lot of other stuff. So it was a really fun episode, and that will be uh, out on Thursday. So make sure to tune in to that one. But for this one, that's going to wrap it up for today, everybody. So thank you for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. That one is always appreciated. For Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan, I am Chris Maselli. This is the Lockdown Avalanche Podcast, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.